I'm Chris Anderson at the EU Web Tech Lab, and today I'm looking at the TI DRV 8301 RM48 kit. It's a development kit centered around TI's DRV 8301 motor driver and their Hercules R microcontroller. It's targeted at the automotive industry, but before we get into those details, let's take a look at what's in the box. Okay, so here we are. You have your documentation. You have your control card. You have your driver board, your motor, you have all your AC cords, regardless of where you're at in the world, you should be pretty well covered. You have your 24 volt DC supply, some motor cables, USB cable, and your software. So let's look closer at the driver board. First, the DRV8301 is the central part of this driver board, it's what it's built around. That's your gate driver. Then you have a DCH010505S. It's a DC to DC converter. You also have a TPS73633 LDO. You also have an ISO 7241A digital isolator, an ISO 1050 isolated CAN transceiver. You also have six Vichet transistors to drive your motor, the three different phases and you have three high power Vache low resistance WSR5 power resistors. For connectors, you have a 24 volt DC input here. You have your three phase motor output. You have your control card slot for your Hercules controller. You have a five volt DC output, a JTAG connector, motor encoder input, your Hall effect sensor feedback, an SPI connector, and an external control connector. You start button, stop button, speed control, as well as LEDs for indicating your status. On the control card, you have the brains, which is the RM48L952. It's a dual core ARM CPU built around safety critical functions. You can run it up to 220 megahertz. You have a Xilinx XC2C32A it's a Cool Runner 2 CPLD, uh, so it's a little short of being an FPGA, but serves essentially the same purpose. You have an FTDI 2232H, which handles your USB communications. Your USB connector's here, and you have an Ethernet connector here as well. So here we are. We've got the hardware ready. I'm going to help you get set up. TI has a very specific set of directions. The first thing they want you to do is verify that Jumper 2 is in place. After that, we'll hook up the motor. First thing you need to do is hook up the wiring harness. Okay. The motor needs to be plugged in, looking top to bottom on my board, black, red, white, green. So we'll set those up. So now that the motor's hooked up, we're going to hook up the two feedback sensors. The one labeled J4, goes on J4, is the encoder feedback. The one labeled J10, for our example project, we're not going to need it, but we'll hook it up anyway. It's the Hall effect sensor. It goes on J10. Now that the motor's all hooked up, we'll hook up the USB to the computer. And finally, the DC supply. Now, to protect your device, you want to make sure that you have your DC side plugged in first before you plug the AC in. And now we'll plug in the AC. Now we're ready to go. So now we're all loaded up. There's some different controls over here. This knob sets the uh, the actual velocity of the motor, if you will. Uh, depending on the different modes you have it in, it's not actually setting velocity, but it, it's setting the rate of rotation. Down here you can enable, disable the motor, you can set the different control modes, your status LEDs, uh, you get some different graphs here depending on the mode you're in. But for starters, let's just get the motor going. And we're now spinning at 93 RPM, but let's crank that up. So now we're sitting about 3,700, 
and if we go as fast as it'll let me. So now we're hitting about 4,200 RPM. Now if we want to see what's going on on the motor, we can turn on our different graphs here and, and that'll give you different feedback, whether it's voltage, current, uh, whatever you want to look at. You can change the scale of the graph, uh, get a little bit more resolution. But really once you get it going, it's, it's a pretty decent software package. It gives you a lot of information about uh, what's going on with the motor and uh, it's a good starting point. And, and to that end, you can actually load this demo code into their Code Composer Studio. So let's take a look at that next. Once you get Code Composer Studio opened up, select Project and Import Existing CCS Eclipse Project. And what you're going to need to do is go to the directory where the project is located. To save time, I've already copied it, but it's in the TI directory on your C drive and you just need to navigate down to where it's actually located. Um, you hit refresh and you're going to see RM48 InstaSpin BLDC pop up. I'll hit finish. It's going to import that project into my project explorer. So if I open that up, here is your main function. So <clears throat> let's say I want to go and hook up some additional circuitry to this board, maybe through the 5 volt and some of these other connectors. I could put code in here to handle that functionality. Um, here's the, the main program begin. If I needed to initialize some additional circuitry prior to running my motor or if I needed to have some additional circuitry running while my motor was running, um, I could get that code initialized in here. If you need to have other functions, maybe monitoring the motor or working in conjunction with the motor, uh, you could dig into the source code. It's all there uh, and figure out where you need to put those functions as well. Overall, the hardware in this kit is very robust, and if you're in the automotive industry, it should address any application you have. If you're a hobbyist or in any other three-phase motor design, the hardware in this kit is probably more than you need. For other content and more videos, check out eeweb.com or the eeweb videos YouTube channel.